All right, we got a typical Craftsman here, lawnmower, riding lawnmower, 17.5 horsepower, 42 inch cut, riding lawnmower. I've got the typical problems that all these damn lawnmowers, these overhead valve engines have. Symptoms, starter, not having enough starter to start the engine. Um, doesn't seem like it wants to turn over whenever you turn the key. You put a good battery in it and it still has a problem turning revolutions unless it's got a supercharge on the battery. Alright, it's valve adjustments, um, rocker arm adjustments rather. Um, the lash and the rocker arms typically are out of, t out of spec. Somebody worked on this obviously before we did. They didn't, they didn't set it right. And these things are now getting sophisticated. I say sophisticated. Well, to the point where they're, they're using uh, compression relief and stuff like that. And uh, the compression relief is in the actual adjustment. So it relies on the exhaust valve to give compression relief upon startup and stuff like that. So apparently the valve adjustment or the rocker arm lash adjustment needs to be just right on these within a certain spec. So this is a 17.5. I'm sure it's the same with the overhead valve 9, 19 and a half and, and 0.5 and all the, all the rest. Within single the, piston. Rocker. Yeah, this is, a, this is a 2013 single, single cylinder, not a twin. Um, I'm sure there's hundreds of videos like this on YouTube somewhere. But we're going to do this because we need to make an intermediate video to all the automotive vehicles, all the automotive videos we make. So we're going to use our 5 8 pull our plug out. What do we need now? Uh, we need our 3 8 to pull out our... And I think this engine's made to pull off of our, our cover here. I think this engine's made in China. I don't know. But uh, one of the other things we found is if the valves are too, the lash is too tight, it starts backfiring through the carburetor a lot. And they just typically won't run very well. They either clink and clack and make a bunch of noise and they're very hard to start and they put a lot of stress on the battery and the starter to get them started. Or they click and they clatter when they do get started because they're too loose. And if they're too tight, the lash adjustment is too tight, then you get a lot of popping through the intake and the exhaust sometimes. And this is a typical problem with Kohler too. We've found, I got a Kohler rider John Deere with a Kohler on it and I got another rider over there in the corner with a 19.5 Briggs and it's got they're out of whack too so we're just gonna just do them all but for right now we're just gonna focus on the 17.5 for this video and uh, we'll cut until we get this crap off yeah somebody's been in here for sure all right a few seconds later, we got the big flathead. I'll try to pry this cover off without bending it all up out of shape. It's gonna put a whole lot of it looks like it looks like RTV. Oh shit! Yeah. It's black RTV. God, no, it's gray or something. Damn. All right, we'll scrape some of this shit off. Get it ready later. All right. In the meantime, get out of the house. Exhaust is on the top, intake's on the bottom. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Well, yeah you need some of that fleck in there. That'll help lubricate it. What? Cigarette ash? Yeah, that's very helpful for it. Yeah, marks yeah, good. A must. All right. So we need to we need to put this thing atop the center, right? Yeah. So what you got is a pencil. Yeah. I took the plug out. I got a screw here so you can mark it. I don't need to mark it. I just need to get at the top dead center on compression stroke. Usually you can tell because... That's obviously not the compression stroke right there. See, it's in between valves. Counterclockwise, right? No, it's clockwise, I think. Clockwise is where the engine spins? Yep. Okay, so we're in between now. Piston's at the top. That's not the right way. We need to go more revolution. That was intake. That means it would come up to compression right now. It's coming up 
to fire. Because it already sucked fuel, like it's starting fuel to move in. The, starting to move the valve. No, it's not, actually. Yeah. Uh-uh. I just right. let off of it. All right, that's top. Yeah, that would be compression stroke right there. I think you want to go a little bit before, right? Yeah, say clockwise. All right. That right there is top dead center. So what do we need to do? Let's back it down. About a quarter of an inch, I think. Back it down to about a quarter inch. I'm going to estimate. Okay, counterclockwise, quarter inch. Clockwise, top dead center. Back it to quarter inch before top dead center. Okay. All right there? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good <clears throat> guesstimate. What do we feel like here? It's hard to believe that that little bit of gap adjustment makes that big of a deal. <clears throat> I mean, look at the guides. It's plastic holding the push rods. It was It's built like trash. Cheap. First thing I'm going to do is pop this off. Oh, look at that. The whole fucking thing is spinning right there. Look. Wonderful. Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. I guess we need a 10 millimeter wrench. Is that 10 mil in there? It's either 10 mil or 3 eighths. All right, we'll pause. What is it? Metric. Mm, a metric system. I think it's metric. Okay, so I got a hole back on this, right? Yeah, we're messing with the exhaust right now, so. Jeez. Also, something else I've noticed, a big ton of oil didn't come dripping out of it. Yeah, it's because it's been sitting for a while. You want to do this when it's cold. Did I mention that? I'm mentioning that right now. You want to do this when it's cold. Okay. The reason why I'm taking this all the way off is because I want to tighten this up. And I want to do one other thing. Shit. We have a deep wall 10. Yeah, we do. It looks like I'm going to need that because I can't get to that. I want to check this push rod to see if it's bent. Because if it's bent at all, we got a serious problem. On the top of an old refrigerator, I wouldn't exactly call that bent. All right. All right, I'm going to tighten the stud up to X amount of inch pounds. I don't remember how many inch pounds they said. Just until I feel like it's tight enough for me. It really doesn't matter until you get off. Uh... Until you snap it. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't make that kind of joke. All right. That feels tight enough to me. All right. All right, our push rod is not bad, right? Yeah. Let me get this oil off of here. Okay, oil's off of here. I think the red went in the block first, huh? Who gives a shit? Doesn't matter, does it? No. I mean, do you see one of them bigger than the other? No. Not directional. It then. did ride this way, so I'll do that, okay? I guess it does matter if it worn itself into place. All right. That looks okay to me. start this process first thing I'm gonna do is get a T whatever and loosen that up I'm not sure what size torques it is it's they, called a T multi-pack torque yeah these are not marked a T combination all right these are not marked I'll loosen that up and I'll get me started Now this is the intake, right? No, exhaust. Intake's on the bottom. Okay, this is the exhaust. Good. I think, I remember, yeah. In exhaust right, uh, has a go. bigger lash than the intake. A bit more of a gap. Well, I got a piece of paper here that says what their specs are between 0 0.003 and 
point zero zero five for intake, but we're doing exhaust, right? Right. So it's got a bigger gap. Zero zero five. Five to zero zero seven. So let's set it at zero zero six. Yeah, right in between is pretty good. How's that? Yeah. That nice way, happy medium. Make a mistake. We're good. Or decide to tighten up. Or Cut that. Up. We'll select our uh, feeler gauge right here for what we need. All right, so a problem. We don't have our feeler gauge does not have a small enough of a feeler gauge, does it? No, it's point zero zero eight. zero zero eight is the actually the smallest we have. So we're gonna have to improvise. So if we need a tighter gap, that means. Okay, I'm fitting the zero zero eight through here, right? Just right. Yeah. I mean, tight, but not too tight. It's fitting in there pretty decent. Snuggly. Snuggly? Shut up. <laughs> Sounds like Snuggle Bear. All right, look. Zero, zero, 008. So it's snug in there. What do you do? You tighten up a little bit, right? I don't know, actually. Let me see. That was kind of tight. I... Now, wait, if that was kind of tight, that probably means zero, zero, 007, right? <laughs> zero zero six. It's extra tight. Let's see. Okay, I had a zero zero eight in there, and it was kind of tight. What I did was I tightened it all the way down to on the zero zero eight. I tightened the in, inner inner screw, the, the, torques. the torques, and then I took the five eighths and did that like a quarter turn, and it tightened it up good and tight. Unfortunately, fortunately, I had to wiggle this side to side to get the feeler gauge in there to fit correctly. So I'm probably at point zero zero five estimated right here. The minimum call for spec. Right. The light went off on his phone, huh? Yeah. Okay. Chat, Chinese pieces of shit. Um, what's the next? I can't wait until everything starts made in America again, if that ever happens. So now the intake. Is that spinning too, this fucker? It sure is. This son of a bitch. Okay. Got to tighten this stud up, too, because this one loosened itself up, I guess. <clears throat> they should really put Loctite on this shit. You know that? Yeah. And we use Loctite on our solid lip cams and our V8s. When we raced, there was nothing wrong with putting some Loctite on this. Let's check this push rod just for shits and giggles. Straight enough. Alright, we got it in there. And you gotta remember, this thing wouldn't even start up without a battery charger on it, really. Yeah, it would just click over, attempt to turn over, and it would make like a one and sound. That's the starter trying to turn over. It would just yurt, yurt. That's it. That's all you'd get out of it. Too much compression. So I'm assuming they have some valve relief design in here. Well, compression relief design in here, like the old three wheelers and stuff, and certain four strokes we had where you'd hit the compression relief lever. Sounds like a certain V8 we did. Here. All right, let's see. So what's the setting on this? 0 0.003 to 0 0.005. I don't actually have... We don't have anything even close to that. So we don't have a 5, we don't have a 3. All I have is my 8. 0 0.008. But regardless, it's got to be tighter than the exhaust. 
I'd be happy if I was anywhere in the vicinity of the right lash adjustment. Okay, so I set the eight in there. I put it kind of tight. And now I'm going to go with tightening the torques up. Okay, the eight's in there tight. See it? Alright, my Torx is tight. Now this is where I get to go quarter inch turn on this, or eighth inch turn on this. And everything else will get tighter. Especially that. <clears throat> See it's tighter than the exhaust? Yep, ever so slightly. That's a pretty good estimate. Okay, I hope that works. And there's your specs right there. Quarter inch before top dead center. So go top dead center and then back it off a quarter inch. And then set your intake between 3 and 3.5 and... Exhaust so, between 5 and Right, and your intake's your bottom and your exhaust is your top. Rocker arm. This should work for all your overhead valve rigs. Um, I don't have to go into Kohler spec to find out what Kohler is because I got to do that one next. But uh, this is, like I said, this is all we're doing on this video for now. But we didn't show you the most important part. Let's see if we can get this thing to turn over and actually start without all the popping and hissing and see if we can actually get the battery in here to actually turn this engine over and not stall uh, and need charging. So let me put all this back together with some with some sealer on it scrape this shit off and then I'll get back to you all right putting this thing back together with some black RTV most resistant to oil and grease going cat a corner we'll come back when this is on how many foot pounds is that one Shut up. click Shut up. And get the spark plug back in. Hopefully she'll start right up and won't give us any problems with turning it over. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, cut that off until we get the plug in. Alright. Let's see if we can get this thing to start. Move that rag. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to start it. Shit, it wouldn't turn over before, especially with the headlights on. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. Yeah, we just need to put some more gas in it, but... gas in it we got it going we got it we got it done so next time I do this for the other ones I would recommend using some red Loctite yeah some kind of heat resistant Loctite uh, maybe some carburetor cleaner or something or some uh, brake cleaner to clean the threads and then put some Loctite on those main studs that go into the butt to the aluminum block and and actually as much as they come loose, from what I hear. They say that these brake single piston engines have that problem of loosening up over time. I would certainly Loctite those sons of bitches too. Because this is, this is you know, I mean, it only takes, took 15 minutes to do this, really. And that's jumbling with the stupid camera, this stupid Chinese piece of shit. So getting this done is not that bad. So I hope this serves as some kind of intermediate video for all the damn econolons I keep doing. All right.